Just six days on from his brutal knockout loss to Alex Pereira at UFC 300, Jamal Hill has already booked his next fight, set to take place at UFC 303 on June 29 against the violent dark horse of the light heavyweight division, Khalil Roundtree Jr. If that strikes you as extremely soon, it is. As of the time of recording, we are just 66 days away from June 29. When a UFC fighter gets brutally knocked unconscious, as Jamal did, they usually receive a medical suspension for at least 60 to 90 days, meaning they are forced to sit out of competition for the duration, giving their body and more importantly their brain time to heal. Whilst this fight sits outside that window of time, it is unlikely that over the next two months, Hill is just going to sit and rest. A fighter usually likes to have 8 to 10 weeks of intense training camp time prior to competition to ensure they are in the best possible condition come fight night. Now I can't speak for a professional fighter, but getting back to hard sparring rounds, especially for a fighter in a hard hitting division like light heavyweight doesn't seem like the smartest move of all time. I can understand the desire to wash the bad taste of a knockout loss from your mouth as soon as you can, but even when discussing the UFC 300 knockout loss himself, Hill seems like he is either in denial or trying to convince the powers that be that the damage he sustained during the fight wasn't as severe as it appeared to all who watched it. Speaking on his YouTube channel, Hill said, I took no damage, most of the fall was me falling down. I remember everything. I remember looking up, seeing his legs, I remember him coming in, trying to block, trying to reach for the underhook. He was able to land some shots and kind of throw my equilibrium off on the other side, but I was coherent the whole time throughout, for the most part. So I take this on, we moving forward. Now, as a fan of Hill and someone who errs on the side of caution when it comes to fighter health and recovery, it's a little disconcerting to hear these views. When reviewing the knockout, Hill's eyes roll back into his head and he looks completely unconscious when Pereira lands the last of his ground and pound. To make the situation even more disconcerting, the fighter Hill has been paired up against to make his ill-advised return against is none other than one of the most violent, ruthless light heavyweights we have seen in recent memory, Khalil Rountree Jr. Known for his brutal knockout power and ruthless Muay Thai, you only need to go back as far as his savage leg kick victory over Modestus Bukowskis to see how relentless Rountree is in the octagon. All this considered, do you think it's wise for Jamal Hill to be returning to the octagon so soon? Can you reference another fighter that has turned around quickly from a knockout loss in recent memory and whether they had success? Let me know. Speaking of UFC 303, Jamal Hill will be sharing the card with the long-awaited matchup between lightweights turned welterweights Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler. If it almost feels like it has been a year since this fight was meant to happen, that's because the season these two guys coached on The Ultimate Fighter wrapped up in August 2023, with the fight repeatedly being pushed back again and again. The biggest holdup appeared to be McGregor's inability to provide a drug sample to USADA, which has had almost everyone wondering out loud whether the former champion was using banned substances at all to aid his incredible quick recovery from a horrific leg injury his last time out against Dustin Poirier in 2021. Regardless, the matchup has finally been announced by Dana White at the post-fight press conference of UFC 300, and it already has people speculating about just how big this event will be. Tickets for the event go on sale April 26, and the price for some seats is absolutely eye-watering. To sit in the center riser, you are looking at over $3,000 US a seat, $2,500 for seats in the lower level, $1,200 for the mezzanine. The cheapest seats appear to come to just over $400 US. In my opinion, that is beyond insanity, expensive, to sit and watch a contest between a fighter who hasn't competed since 2021 and hasn't won a fight since 2020 in Conor McGregor and a fighter in Chandler that is 2-3 and three in the promotion, albeit both have had some of the most exciting fights in the promotion. Needless to say, the UFC are licking their lips at the prospect of this payday, and there are reports that this could even top the largest gate numbers for the promotion, with UFC 300 coming in at third in the all-time gates with $16.5 million. It is the second card to slot into the top five that doesn't have McGregor. As it stands, UFC 303 currently has the following fights. Conor McGregor vs. Michael Chandler, Andre Feely vs. Cub Swanson, Gillian Robertson vs. Michelle Waterson Gomez, Carlos Hernandez vs. Ray Tsuruya, and Mark Andre Barriot vs. Joe Pfeiffer. 
to those that spend $3,000 to watch that, God bless you. That's all that's happening in MMA today. See you next time.